thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us worship God. Welcome to this time of worship on Palm Sunday at the Wallace Presbyterian Church. We're so glad to have all of you here today. Please take time to greet each other and to sign the friendship pad and share it with one another. The beginning of Holy Week is a wonderful day as our children lead us in worship and song. The schedule for the week is in the bulletin. I hope you'll be able to come Friday night for our Good Friday service at 7.30. We will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Next Sunday morning on Easter, 7 a.m. on the steps of the First Baptist Church down the street, early Easter service, and then worship here at 11 o'clock. Please look at all the other announcements in the bulletin about things happening in the life of this church and in the community. And it's wonderful as we celebrate and worship today. sentences. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wave palm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Our first hymn is number 197.
we sing, we wave our branches, we shout Hosanna, then we turn away and go back to our old ways, our old lives, our old sins. But God is in the business of granting forgiveness and filling us with new life. Let us confess to the one who comes to fill us with grace. I invite you to join me in our unison prayer of confession, our silent prayers, and our assurance of pardon. Let us pray together. O Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's. Our faith is often more show than substance. Our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises, and to receive us as your own. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear the words of the Lord from Psalm 118. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. In Christ, God answers us and sets us free. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy in our lives. Thank you. 
children to see him and some of the grown-ups weren't happy about it and they tried to tell the parents to take the children away and Jesus said wait a minute you bring the children to me and he blessed them and he hugged them and he said this is what God wants you to be like wants you to be like a child and I think y'all showed us that today I think Jesus was probably very happy today to hear your singing the first song we sang in worship this morning 
was Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang. And y'all helped us do that. And I just wanted to let you know something that you already know, but I wanted to remind you that Jesus loves you very, very much. And you see all those people out there? They love you very, very much too. And they're very happy to see you and very happy to tell you about Jesus. And guess what? Jesus loves all of them very, very much too, and me, because we're all children of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, that's Jack. That's Jack. Two babies, that's right. And Cooper, that's right. We've got a lot of people up here today. Do you know the song, Jesus Loves Me? Yes, this I know. For the Bible tells me that you do. You got three babies. I'm a baby. Yeah. Why don't we all sing it together? Maybe everybody can sing it. Everybody in the room. You want to sing it? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. <laughs> that is your night night song. Good. Well, let's have a sings that to me too. Your mama sings it to you? That's a good song. Day or something. Let's have a prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the children of our church. We love them so much, and they've helped us praise you today and remind us of how much you love us as your children. Lord, we pray for children everywhere. Help us to follow them as they lead us to Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Thank you all for coming up and for singing today.
Please join me in our prayer for illumination. As we get ready to hear the Word of God, you'll find the prayer printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own, speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. verses 1 through 4 and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our next hymn is number 221.
Jesus has finally made it to Jerusalem. In Luke's gospel, he heads that way at the end of chapter 9, and here we are 10 chapters later. We've made a journey a long way, and we come to Jerusalem on what we know as Palm Sunday. Many times on Palm Sunday, you only hear the first part of the story about Jesus riding in on the donkey and the people shouting. But other things happened that same day, and so I'm going to read all the way to the end of chapter 19. So this is the full story of Palm Sunday. I invite you to listen for God's Word. Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 48. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it, as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were spellbound by what they heard. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the late fall of 1963, President John F. Kennedy had not yet formally announced his bid for re-election. However, he and his advisors had already begun making plans for the campaign, and the president thought he had a good chance of winning re-election. Kennedy knew it was crucial to his re-election to carry the state of Texas, so he made plans to travel to Dallas despite warnings of the danger he might face. Prior to his late November visit, Full-page ads ran in the Dallas papers criticizing the president for his liberal views and his softness on communism. On Friday, November 22, 1963, the presidential motorcade made a sharp left turn onto Elm Street. Governor and First Lady John and Nellie Conley were seated in front of the president and the First Lady. Shortly after the parade passed by the Texas School Book Depository, Nellie Conley turned in her seat and said, Mr. President, you can't say Dallas doesn't love you. Then she heard three rifle shots and saw the president grab his throat. And when she turned around in the seat, she realized her husband had been grievously wounded in the back. On his way from Galilee in the north, 
to Jerusalem in the south. Jesus was warned against going to Jerusalem. In Luke 13, we read, At that very hour some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow and on the third day, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. On Palm Sunday, at the beginning of Holy Week, Jesus rode a donkey at the head of a parade down the Mount of Olives and up to Jerusalem. And Luke reports, as he was now approaching the path down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all of the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. One of Jesus' disciples could have turned to him and said, Master, you can't say that Jerusalem doesn't love you. The cross didn't happen immediately, but it was only five days away. On this Palm Sunday, we've heard the children singing. We've seen palm branches waving. We've joined our voices in singing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Interestingly enough, Luke's story of Palm Sunday doesn't mention palm branches. And for that matter, the story doesn't say anything about any kind of branches. Instead, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. Neither does Luke's story mention the children singing in the pillared court and temple. But that's Palm Sunday, and it was wonderful to have our children leading us in worship. In Luke's story, it was the whole multitude of the disciples who began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice, but not everyone was so overjoyed at the Palm Sunday parade. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop, which is a very genteel translation of tell them to shut up. And Jesus said, well, if they did, the stones would cry out. On the church calendar, today is designated as Palm Sunday. It's also designated as Passion Sunday. And when you hear the word passion, you might think of this dictionary definition, strong and barely controllable emotion, a state or an outburst of strong emotion, an intense desire or an enthusiasm for something. Our English word passion is derived from the Latin word for suffer. And that's why the suffering and death of Jesus is referred to as the passion of the Christ. And as we wave our palm branches and we sing Hosanna on Palm Sunday, we need to keep in mind the passion of the Christ. According to the Presbyterian Mission website, the question is frequently asked, why combine the passion with the palms? And the most important reason for combining the passion and the palms is the relationship between the death and the resurrection of Jesus. To understand the resurrection, we must contemplate the passion of Jesus. We must contemplate and meditate on the mystery of the cross before we celebrate the glorious message of Easter. So this eight-day week that starts today and runs to next Sunday is framed on this end by resurrection and death, and on the end of the week by death and resurrection. And it's that inseparable relationship between the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that is the reason the passion of the Christ and the palms of Palm Sunday are linked together on this day. And the palms and the passion are evident all throughout today's worship service. We gathered with songs of Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang Hosanna to glory to the King, let your praises ring. We're going to go out from here singing all glory, laud, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. But woven into the fabric of our Palm Sunday celebration with the palms and the Hosannas is the passion of Christ. We confessed that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's, that our faith is often more show than substance, that our hearts are in need of cleansing. We just sang about the sacred head now wounded, 
with grief and shame weighed down and again confessed what thou my Lord hast suffered was all for sinners gain mine mine was the transgression but thine the deadly pain as the offering is being taken up this morning the handbell choir will play a meditative arrangement of the hymn Jesus keep me near the cross and the third verse of that hymn says near the cross O Lamb of God bring its scenes before me help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me even in the glorious final hymn of Palm Sunday today, we remember to thee before thy passion, they sang their hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted, our melody we raise. We might think that the passion of Christ happened only on Friday when he was nailed to the cross. But that would be a very narrow understanding of what Jesus went through during the final week of his life. Luke tells us as he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, if you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. This may not be the exact beginning of the passion of Christ in Holy Week, but it's a good starting point. You know as well as I do that weeping is more than just shedding a few tears. When, when Jesus wept over the city, he was expressing his grief and his sorrow. His heart was broken. And it's not saying too much to suggest that in fact Jesus was mourning over Jerusalem and that must have pierced his soul. In his blog called The Things That Make for Peace, Frederick Buechner writes, despair and hope, they travel the road to Jerusalem together, as together they travel every road we take. Despair at what in our madness we are bringing down on our own heads, and hope in him who travels that road with us and for us, and who is the only one of us all who is not mad. Hope in the king who approaches every human heart like a city, and it is a very great hope, as hopes go, and well worth all our singing and dancing and little palms, because not even death can prevail against this king, and not even the end of the world, when end it does, will be the end of him and of the mystery and majesty of love. Blessed is he. Many years ago, in an adult Sunday school class at a church in Richmond, we were talking about the events of Holy Week, including Jesus' death on the cross. One woman spoke up and said, I think Jesus' crucifixion probably wasn't as bad as we think because he already knew he was going to be raised from the dead. And I remember thinking, did you really just say that? However, however over the years, I've thought a lot about that. And I've come to realize that that woman was putting into words what many of us might want to think because the events of Holy Week, including the Passion and the Palms, are just too painful to think about. But as one of our seminary professors used to say, to get to Easter Sunday, you have to go through Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. Three years ago, in March 2016, Ann Weems died of complications from a brain tumor. According to her obituary, she was a noted writer, speaker, liturgist, and worship leader. She was the daughter of a Presbyterian minister. She was the wife of a Presbyterian minister. She's been called the Presbyterian Poet Laureate. One of her seven published books of poems that were meant to be used in worship is called Kneeling in Jerusalem. On this passion Palm Sunday, I'd like to share some of Ann Weems' poems from Kneeling in Jerusalem. The first is called, The Way to Jerusalem is Cluttered. The way to Jerusalem is cluttered with bits and pieces of our lives that fly up and cry out, wounding us as we try to keep upon this path that leads to life. Why didn't somebody tell us 
that it would be so hard. In the midst of the clutter, the children laugh and run after stars. Those of us who are wise will follow, for the children will be the first to kneel in Jerusalem. The second poem is a bit longer. In these verses, Ann Weems describes the mixed bag that is Palm Sunday and Holy Week. It is called From Hosanna to Hora, the only road to Easter. Balloons, maybe. If Jesus were coming here, maybe we'd line up on either side of his parade route and wave balloons as he passed, back and forth, a multitude of colors, and we'd probably shout, yay, instead of Hosanna. And we'd hold up homemade posters saying, welcome Jesus, as he passed by, probably in one of those bubble top cars because the FBI would not want to be left out of this one. On the other hand, maybe he'd refuse to ride and get on the donkey after all, or maybe even walk down the middle of the road with balloons bobbing as he walked, and he'd wave to us, and he'd bless us, and we'd follow, and we'd follow, and we'd follow. What a celebration, what a festival of, festival of faith that would be. And when the parade passed by, we'd finally go home and look forward to the celebration next Sunday. But what about Holy Week? The days lengthen, the pear tree flowers white outside my kitchen window in this mysterious Lenten mix of lament and hope, the taunting, blood-spattered face of war screams into our lives, and we are tempted to despair. The TV bleeds and explodes, and the unspeakable, obscene inhumanity of war blares into our ears and our hearts, and we turn and run into a wall, the same wall we visit each Lent trying to get around a gate called truth, trying to go from Palm Sunday straight to Easter morning, trying to keep from going into that courtyard where we must answer whether we know him or not, trying to keep from going anywhere near that cross. So give us the palms and give us a parade, but oh God, whisk us right from Palm Sunday to that great getting up morning. Have our Easter baskets filled and waiting for us, oh God, because this year we're tired and we're scared and we just want a little peace and quiet. And so we turn and run. Or we kneel and pray for mercy and for miracles and the eyes to see this Jesus named Emmanuel, the eyes to see that God is with us. A few years ago, someone said to me, the music at the Good Friday service is so sad and depressing. Well, I suppose it can be, especially compared to today. Hosanna, loud Hosanna of Palm Sunday and Jesus Christ is risen today, next Sunday morning. But they all come as a package deal, even when we don't want to admit it. And even when we try to get from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday as quickly as we can, detouring around all of the events of Monday through Saturday. So during this Holy Week, as the hosannas are still ringing in your ears, I encourage you to pick up a Bible and read one or more of the gospel stories about Jesus' final week. The fact that Mark devotes 37.5% of his gospel to this one week, Matthew 28.5%, Luke 23%, John a whopping 47% of his gospel to this one week ought to tell us how important this Holy Week is for our lives, beginning today with the palms and the passion. I encourage you to make your plans to worship on Friday night, to come to the Lord's table, to share communion with Him and His people, and to contemplate God's wondrous love in Jesus Christ. Then I encourage you, I encourage you, I encourage you 
to plan to celebrate and sing hallelujah. He is risen at the top of your lungs next Sunday. And in between these two Sundays, think on how we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord, not just during Holy Week, but every day of our lives. I'll leave you with one more Ann Weems poem from Kneeling in Jerusalem. We're good at planning. Give us a task force and a project and we're off and running. No trouble at all. Going to the village and finding the colt, even negotiating with the owners is right down our alley. And how we love a parade. In a frenzy of celebration, we gladly focus on Jesus and generously throw our coats and palms in his path. And we can shout praise loudly enough to make the Pharisees complain. It's all so good. It's between parades that we don't do so well. From Sunday to Sunday, we forget our hosannas. Between parades, the stones will have to shout because we don't. Amen. I've chosen a prayer written by Joanna Hereda that she posted on her spacious faith blog, and I chose it because it speaks so well to this Passion Palm Sunday. Let us pray. God of the foolish cross, tottering down the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey, you are not the Savior we expect. Your power doesn't look like the power we want from God to demonstrate. Your wisdom makes no sense to us. We are happy to join the crowd waving branches, but not so sure we want to follow you into the temple courts, into the upper room, into the Garden of Gethsemane, to the foot of the cross. Forgive our false assumptions. Clarify our clouded vision. Let us relax into the foolishness of your love and your grace. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, we beseech you. Amen. very long list of prayer concerns today, but want to begin with a great joy, and that's the report Andrea Castine got Thursday from her scans at Duke. No, I think I got this right, no new growths. The largest tumor has shrunk some, and some of the smallest tumors are almost gone. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep praying for Zach and Andrea and for their girls and for their whole family. I want to lift up these concerns and then maybe just have a time for us to open our hearts for prayer and then close with the Lord's Prayer. Arnie Young, who Arnie and Joy worshipped with us for quite a while and still help with our food pantry, has been diagnosed with lymphoma and he will begin chemotherapy treatments at New Hanover Regional Medical Center on Tuesday of this week. And Charlie and Barbara Sweditz, who have been worshiping with us and work in our food pantry, their daughter Tara Lumley in Asheville was mowing grass and fell off an eight-foot embankment on Tuesday, has a compression fracture of her leg and ankle, has already undergone one surgery and will have another surgery the week after Easter and Charlie and Barbara are up there taking care of their grandchildren. Autumn Tooney, who's the daughter of Janet Tooney, who worships with us, um, is recovering from surgery for diverticulitis. Kit Sheckler, daughter of Bill and Susan Walters, is recovering following complications during surgery to repair arteries in her brain. Bill said today that she's 
been let out of ICU in a regular room. They're going to be doing some more angiograms. But she got up and took a shower, and he said he really liked that. Um, Shella Ferrier is at New Hanover Regional Medical Center, may come home today. Pearson Johnson fell and broke his arm, had to have some surgery during the week, so he's sporting a cast. Um, Carrie James, Margaret James' son, he was a child of this church, died this past week. We want to pray for his family. Continue to lift up Fred Burroughs, uh, who's had an MRI on his back, he's having a lot of trouble with his back and his legs and a lot of pain. I want to pray for Bobby Blanton, for Ken Roberts, for Joseph Bryant. So I thought maybe I could just open the prayer and then can have silent prayers. Or if you want to offer up a prayer, that's fine. And then we'll have the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that Jesus rode into Jerusalem not the king we wanted and hoped for and thought was best. We thank you that Jesus rode in to Jerusalem as your king, the king who came to serve and not to be served, to give his life for our lives. So we do shout Hosanna and we rejoice. But Lord, let us meditate on the great cost of your love for us in Jesus Christ in whose name we offer all of these prayers. Lord, you have heard this long list of concerns for people that we love dearly, our neighbors, our friends, our church members, children of the church, children of friends and church members, and we lift them all up to you. We rejoice so greatly with Zach and Andrea, and we pray that you will continue to heal her and to give her strength and spirit. Lord, we offer you these other names of people who are going through treatments, who are recovering from surgeries, who are mourning the death of loved ones. Lord, here are the prayers of our hearts. Almighty God, the psalmist reminds us that your steadfast love endures forever. And scripture reminds us that nothing in all of creation can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings.
right? Holy and loving Creator, you are a generous giver. We give a portion, a token. You gave your Son, Jesus. You offered us forgiveness and redemption. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We are unworthy servants, but for your grace and boundless love. So we dedicate these offerings to you, the greatest of all givers. We dedicate them in the name of him whose name is above every name. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let's affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our final hymn is number 196. <laughs> abandoned. Blessed is the one who walks toward us by the way of grace that holds us fast. 
Blessed is the one who calls us to follow in the way of blessing in the path of joy. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Mm -hmm.